Did I nail it, Cody? Yeah! It always messes with the guys in the tech booth if the preacher doesn't get in the middle. Like, if you stand right here, it really bothers them, because they're like, now the cameras look funny and all that. And... All right, good morning. So, I don't know if it's the coffee or what, but I'm real jittery this morning. So, if I run around a lot, uh, they want me to move it like two inches that way. There we go. Uh, if I move around a lot or whatever, I don't know what's going on. I, I'm, a little bit, I'm a little bit antsy and jumpy, shaky, whatever. Uh, maybe I just need some more caffeine. I don't know if that's how it works, but uh, um, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see a little bit later. So I hope, I hope that you guys are ready. Um, so one of the things that I, uh, I like to do, how many, so I'm in, first off, I'll, I'll give you a little, little insight into who I am. Uh, I, I, my name's Travis, obviously, but Hey, it's up there. Um, but uh, my name's Travis. Um, but I am. I grew up in the '90s, so uh, I, I was I was born, you know, a good decade before that. But uh, I, I'm I'm one of those. Some of you get some of you are excited, but see, nobody cheered because Gen Xers don't really care. Um, so we were just like, yeah, whatever. Uh, so I grew up in the '90s. So one of the things that I really love to do uh, and. If you're with me in, the, in that era, you might have the same, uh, maybe you had the same experiences growing up, but on Fridays and Saturdays or whenever we weren't working or whatever, what did we like to do in this area? Anybody, let's see if anybody can guess it. Co cruise was one thing. Uh, however, my car burned premium and uh, got about six miles to the gallon, so that got limited pretty, pretty quickly. Anything else? So what? Fishing. Fishing. You're not even close to that generation, like not even in the same millennia. Uh, anyway, um, so in, nobody my age grew up in the 90s. What did we do on Fridays and Saturday nights? Okay, we went to the we went to Walmart. Uh, nobody said it, so apparently no one had the same childhood I did. We went to the mall. Remember what those were? We had a mall. We would actually go and walk around. And what did we do when we were there? Nothing. It didn't matter. Nothing. We didn't do anything. We drove all the way to Metro North or uh, sometimes, sometimes Independence. You know, we would, we would bounce around from mall to mall every once in a while. But for, for us, my group that I ran around with, most of the time we were at Metro North Mall. Uh, you know, the one with the balloons and stuff. And all, now if you've seen the, po the photos, it's kind of creepy. They tore it all down now. But um, after it was abandoned for however long. But, but we went to the mall. Why did, so other than doing nothing... One of my favorite things to do when we went to the, we went to the mall was I liked watching people. Like, I, I'm just, I'm a people watcher. I'm still a people watcher. Like, I still, well, I like to go places where I can just sit down and watch. Because some of you all are, are amazing, both for good reason and bad. But it, it's like, you know, I, I guess in today's era, it would be like the Facebook pages that are like the people of Walmart Facebook pages. Except we did that in real life. We went and watched those people in real life and tried to find them and go, look at that. What is going on here? But we, I loved watching people. I always liked going to, to I, didn't really like, I didn't really like being in the crowds, but I like watching the crowd. So if that gives you a little bit of insight on, on who I am. And so, so what happens to me now is whenever I get in a crowd of people, like right now, I'm preaching and I'm talking, but I'm also watching you. Um, because, you know, that's what I do. But, like, I like to watch crowds. I like to see how the dynamics of, of different groups kind of uh, gravitate towards each other. And, and, you know, some of it is, you know, fashion-based and hobby-based and age-based and all this stuff. And I get, I get kind of nerded out into some of that stuff. Um, and, and I really watch. You know, last week, we had one of the largest crowds that we'll have every year at the church. We had the Easter crowd, as we call them. Uh, some of you were in that Easter crowd. Uh, and, and for me, you can count on it. I was up here watching you. Um, sorry if that's creepy, but that's just the reason. That's, you know, I like watching people. So, um, you know, I was watching people take photos in the back and, and go outside and come in with their food and, and all this stuff. And I'm just watching how everything all plays out. I really enjoy watching crowds. Like I, like, I like seeing the difference in people, the dynamics that, that go from group to group and all, all of that. So a little bit of, that's a little bit about me. Let's pray, and then we'll jump in and get going. Father God, I just want to thank you for this day. I thank you for uh, everything that you've, you've done for us, Father. I thank you for this 
uh, this Easter season that we've just come through and how many, how many blessings that that, that is a reminder of. Father, I thank you for this people and this group of people who are here this morning. Father, I just thank you for, uh, for the opportunity that I have to come and to share something that you've given to me. Father, we th- I thank you and I love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So also one thing you might know about me is I tend to not preach as long as my dad. So there you're already in a good mood, right? Okay. Um, so, and we started a little early. So, you know, I, I don't know if you got 11.30 lunch date, but you might be a few minutes late. Um, I want to get this scripture in our heads before we get started. So I want to start out with a, with a scripture. And I just want to kind of let you marinate on that for a while. It's Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 through 33. Uh, I'll read the whole thing, but we're going to focus in on one little part of it. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek, say it with me. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. This, this passage of scripture is about a, it's a whole section of pastor, uh, a passage of scripture about worry and about uh, what we need and what we think about and how we think about things and how we prioritize things in our mind. And a lot of times, uh, this scripture is addressing the issue of, of worry and anxiety and worrying about, well, how's the car payment going to get paid or how's, um, I'm going to get clothes for my kids, you know, coming up or, or all this stuff, all the things that we worry about as, as adults and, and students and, and all, this, all this different stuff. And this passage of scripture basically comes to this pinnacle at this one spot. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God. So that's where I want our minds at today. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump into a, a little bit of a story. One of the groups and one of the crowds that I, I like to attend, you might have noticed today, this is my nicest shirt. Um, I didn't realize when I went last couple weeks ago, I went to a game and didn't realize how expensive jerseys had gotten, but I had already talked to my wife and said, I'm getting a jersey. And then I walked up there and saw the price tag. And I'm like, Phew. but so this is the nicest shirt I own. Uh, literally it's the most expensive, but anybody know who these guys are? Sporting, like three of you. Yes, that is exactly how the demographics play out in the city. About 3% of the people know who Sporting Kansas City is. Um, it's one of my favorite places to go to watch people, um, both for the entertainment that's happening on the field and the entertainment that's happening in the crowd. Uh, if you've ever been around a soccer culture and soccer community, they're, they're, a little bit, they're a little bit loud, a little bit wild. I always tell my friends if they're going to go with me for the first time that if you've ever been to like a college football game, it's kind of like that vibe, uh, especially the student section. The, they get a little rowdy sometimes. So um, if, if that's the kind of... Uh, thing you're in, interested in, it'll, it's a good time. Also, soccer games only last, they're like less than two hours. You're in and out. So if you hate it, you suffered through for two hours. So yeah, come on, come out with me and, and I'll, I'll, give you a, I'll give you the rundown of what's going on. But inside the sporting park, inside the stadium, there's a section of people called the cauldron. And the cauldron is where I like to sit because the cauldron is loud. The cauldron, we have benches, but we don't use them. We stand the whole time. They hand out flags that are like six foot tall and, and they're attached to a PVC pipe. And it is your duty, if you are sitting in that section, to participate in the game. Like your job is to yell and scream and sing and wave your flag and, and, and all, the, all the appropriate times and, and whatever. Now, I will say I do not... Uh, I do not... Um, participate in some of the songs. And if you've been to the game, you understand there's some, you know, there's some uh, questionable lyrics. I'll just put it that way. Uh, that, that I don't participate in all of them, but I, I really like the enthusiasm. So, you know, it's a, it's a, they're a fun group to be around. Uh, obviously, it's not church. So uh, we'll, just, we'll just get that out. But in the stadium, within the stadium, there's this one group and they are asked to participate in the game. And if you don't participate... One thing that people find out if they want to go and and sit down and not sing, uh, there are section leaders across the front, and they will yell at you. If you are not interested in participating, they will ask you to move somewhere because this is the section that participates. We are a part of the club. Uh, That's kind of the, the mindset. And then there's all these other seats all the way around the stadium, and those are for the people who who just want to come attend. So you have this, this, you know, dual 
purpose of people being there. And, and they, they show up and some people just want to watch the game and they just want to sit down and enjoy their seat and enjoy their view and watch the game. And I guess that's fine. I still think you're doing it wrong. But, um, and then there's the cauldron and it's just crazy and it's fun. And, and everybody, everybody is, for the most part, everybody's in a, in a good mood. I've seen a few people get escorted out because they just got a little hostile. But um, for the most part, everybody's in a good mood and everybody's having a good time unless the team's doing bad. But that's, that's where I am, and, and that's, that's the group I like to be in. But there's multiple groups in the stadium, and I'm going to come back to that. So one thing that I've, I've found that in these groups that I've, um, I've attended, there's like the similar groups within the dynamics inside of our families. Anybody in this room have like the loud people in your family? If you're in my family, you should have your hand raised. Uh, I think most of my family, so you have one of those, you're all loud families, you're all loud. So here's the thing, if you weren't sure, you're probably the loud one that everyone else talks about, um, but that's the way it goes. In our family, um, man, we got loud ones. We, everybody, I think Audra made the joke a few weeks ago, why does everybody talk in cap locks? Like we just all like, it's it's always loud. It's always intense, and it's always whatever. So like even within our, but even within our family, there's some people that aren't as loud, and you'll they'll just sit back and watch. And I don't, you never really know what they're thinking because they don't say it. Probably because they can't get a word in edgewise. But um, they they they're they're a little more quiet and a little more reserved, and and that's fine. There's there's all these dynamics to all these families, and it, it's one of one of the things that that I've kind of noticed is all these families have different dynamics, and we also have different groups of people that gather together. Like, like there's different family groups, right? So the, the first one, for example, is like a family reunion. How many of you guys have had a big family reunion? So, yeah, a lot of you, a lot of us. Um, you travel to a place, you go to this place and, and whatever, and you get together and you're, I'm assuming you're going to eat because that's what we do, but you're going to eat and then there's probably some activities going on. The kids can play and the adults can do whatever, but, but like we're, we're familiar with this, this family uh, reunion dynamic, this group. And what, what happens is this, in this reunion group, there's a lot of times where it's been a while since you've been together. Like maybe, maybe it's, it's been a while. You, you, you are, you know, you're still family, but maybe you haven't, you know, seen each other in a while. See, in, in my family, we, most of us are from Tennessee. So if you're in my grandpa's branch of the family, you moved up here, everybody else stayed down there. So we don't get to see each other a lot. Like we, we I'll be honest, just probably like a lot of other people, we used to travel back and forth a lot more. We used to see each other a lot more and we don't as much anymore. Uh, and, and so, but that's one of the things, like we, we're still family, but we kind of only get together during these reunion times. No, we still love each other. Like if one of them called on the phone and said, hey, I got something going on, could you help me out? We would go help them because they're family and we love them. But when we get to these reunions, a lot of times we just have a lot of catching up to do. Like we haven't seen each other a while, so we're asking them, say, hey, what, what was going on about, about this? And you know, that's one of the benefits of social media is we can kind of follow each other from a distance. But so, so then when we get together, we ask them, say, hey, I saw this on this post that you made. Uh, how's that going or whatever? And we kind of catch up. There's not really a lot of details about their daily life or about, de- about details of what they are going through specifically. We're mainly just getting the highlights. Like when we show up to those family reunions, we're just getting the highlights. And then there's another group of, of family. There's the vacation group of family. Like, so this is the family you like spending time with. Okay, you, you can't, some of you didn't quite catch on yet. But like, you know, they're the ones you like to spend time with. In other words, there's probably some that you... Okay, you just don't want to go on vacation with them. You still love them, but you're not really sure you want to go on vacation with them and be stuck in a car or, you know, in an activity or whatever. But this vacation group, it's a little bit smaller circle with, from within the family, right? Like, you'll still, you'll go on vacation with them. You, you will, you like spending time with them. You'll do big things with them. Like, you'll make these grand plans. We're going to drive across the country and go to the Grand Canyon. We're going to have, like, a 
15 passenger bus and load everybody up and we're gonna, we're gonna roll across and try not to kill each other by the time we get there. Um, like, but you'll plan these big grand adventures and, and events and, and you'll participate in those together. And, and mainly you'll like the activities kind of for what it does for you. Like it was a good experience. It got my family to see some stuff. It got, got my family to have this, this conversation and we got to know each other a little bit better and, and we're making memories together, right? Like we, we all say that we wanna go on vacations because we wanna make memories as a family. But it's not that personal, right? You're more there for the entertainment aspect. You're to have a good time. You might catch up on a few things, but it's not, you're not getting real deep and real personal. And then the next group of family is this dinner group. You'll have, you'll have this group of people over to the house. You'll have a, you'll have a meal with them. You'll, you'll bring them into your home, and they're the ones that you share things with. Like, it's not just about going on a, a trip or doing the adventure or, 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 or maybe meeting up. Everyone. This, time, this time, we're actually going uh, to share some things together. We're going to share a meal. We're going we're gonna to sit down and, and you know, invest some face-to-face time. It's a little more intimate setting, you know, than the Grand Canyon. Um, It's a little more private conversation. Like you can talk about some stuff that's maybe a little bit uh, more personal. And you share things. You you give a little and you get a little. It's like this, 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 relationship, you know, this picture in our head, like, oh yeah, they're family, they're, we're going to bring them in, maybe, you know, maybe this is your kids, maybe this is, you know, somebody in your circle, but those are the people that you're, you're okay with having a dinner group with, but you're not going to talk about st- something that's too deep, you know, because we got dessert coming, and then there's a set, this next group that I, that I kind of labeled the meeting group, you know, the ones that you have the family meetings about, or with. These, this is the group that you deal with things in, in this group. You know, when, when something comes up or uh, an issue comes up that is affecting the family or affecting, the, this is the group that you call together and say, okay, we got to deal with this. We got to get this taken care of. We got we to work some things out. We got to talk about some things. You know, these are, these are serious conversations. These are intentional conversations. We're not just getting together to have a good time and maybe watch a sporting game or, or participate in, in some group activity. This is the things that we are being intentional about, this family meeting. It's, it's an intentional decision to get together and to deal with some stuff. This is the, kind, this is the type of group that you make plans with, that you say, hey, uh, as a family, we want this to happen. This is where we're headed down. The, this is where I, I feel like we are, and this is where I think you're making plans. It's very personal. It's, hey, we wanna, we're not leaving this room until we've talked about this. You know, those family meetings can, can, be, can be great. They can, be, they can have uh, a new adventure on the horizon, and you want to bring everybody in, and you say, okay, this is what's going on in my life, and I want to I wanna explain to you everything that's happening so that we can go forward together as a family unit. As we, that we can move forward. See, this is, this is also the group that accountability happens. Like you're holding each other responsible for their actions and their behavior and the things that they're saying and doing and, and all that stuff. This happens in family meetings. And one of the things that I, I've uh, kind of been studying this week and, and I've, I've looked into is what I'm seeing is that church is kind of like these family groups too. We kind of got the same groups. You know, we've got, we've got groups where some will show up periodically. You know, they'll catch up, get the highlights, and then go on with our lives. You know, we've, the church has those reunion groups. that They show up every once in a while for the big, the big deal and the calendar dates and things like that, the, the Easter and Christmas. And, and we'll show, they'll show up for that and, and catch up, get the highlights of what's going on kind of get a lay of the land, and then move on about their lives. Here's what I found in in Scripture. Revelations 3, 15, and 16. It says, I know your works. You're neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold nor hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You know, we, we have a, we have a pattern in our, our church culture as a, 
as a nation, as probably a globally, <clears throat> that we, for some reason, on Christmas and Easter and maybe Mother's Day, we have large attendance dates. And, and that's, that's just, it's been, it's been going on my whole life. Like, I, I know that's going on my whole, I, I know from, from me looking at it, that, that's going on at least my whole life. I'm going to guess it's been going on for longer than that. There's a few of you here older than me in this room. I see nodding your head. It's been going on for a long time. I, I want to be very clear. I, I think this verse is for you. When you read through that chapter in Revelations, you see, you see about the church of Laodicea and how they, they showed up, but that was about the depth. There was, no, there was no depth to their faith. There was no actions that happened after that. They just showed up, came, and left. They heard the word of God. It didn't change anything. And they just went on with their lives. And John tells us that this is, to God, this is like being lukewarm. You're neither hot nor cold. You're indifferent. Like you can open the word of God and it has no impact. He says, I will spit you out of my mouth. It's not a very pleasant thought. You know, this group will show up to church and leave indifferent. God will speak to them and they'll say, eh, I'll see you at the next reunion. I'll put it on my calendar. Some of us are gonna, some of us will enjoy spending time there. Some, some of the, the next group, some, some in this group will enjoy spending time there. They're going to do some big things together, and they're going to get some good stuff from it. Remember, this was the vacation group. Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work, workers of lawlessness. That, that is, uh, I've heard several pastors say, that's the most frightening passage in the Bible for a pastor. Because they know that what it's saying is that there are going to be people that are going to, they're not only going to attend the church, that are going to work in the church. People that are going to do things in the church. And they're going to think that because they've done something in the church and, and volunteered and done this thing, that that's all it takes. And they're going to get to heaven and God's going to say, but you didn't know me. You did some things, but you didn't know me. This group will stand up and, and say, but, but I was always talking about, about the things of the church. I was always, you know, doing things at the church. And I always have a great time with those people. Listen, it's not about a club that you attend. This isn't a club. This is a gathering together of people who believe that Jesus was God, who believed that Jesus rose from the dead. The next group, some of them will get more involved. They're gonna share some talents, some gifts, and time, but, but probably nothing too deep. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna invest, but not, not get real serious, not get real personal. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3, 1 through 3a says, But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you're not ready, for you are still of the flesh. This group are almost, almost there. This group is almost there, but not quite ready to take the big bites. You want to... You want to give, but only until it gets hard or only until it gets inconvenient. 
See, you're hearing the word of God and you're saying, man, I like that, I like that. That sounds good. Like that, I, I, I like how we're taking care of our marriages and I like how we're taking care of our family. Oh, but wait, now it's getting a little difficult. I don't know if I can handle that. That's a little harder to chew. I see Paul saying, saying here, it's like, I can only give you milk because you're not ready. You know, this, this family group that comes to the dinner table and you have, you have dinner with, they're, they're not quite ready for the family meeting yet. They're not quite ready to sit down and get serious about the things of the, of the family and the direction of the family. It's, it's, a, it's a half measure. It's like I can almost get there as long as it's convenient, as long as it doesn't affect too, much of, too many other areas of my life. And this next, the next group, some will come with a passion to get things done and a pursuit to know deeply who God is and will plan and prepare whatever it takes to know him more moving forward. John 6, 67 through 69 says, so Jesus said to the 12, do you want to go away as well? This is Jesus had just, had just told something that was very hard, very difficult for, for all of these people around. He had a lot of people standing around him while he was preaching. And he started talking about some very difficult things. He started putting meat on the table. And they were like, oh, I don't know if I can do all that. So everybody was leaving him. Jesus had a habit of doing that. He would gather a big crowd and then he would start talking and they're like, oh, that sounds difficult. I'm probably out. And this was one of those times where he started, he drew a big crowd and people wanted to come hear what he had to say. But as soon as it got difficult, they were like, ah, I don't think I can, I don't think I can do all that. And they started leaving. So, so Jesus looks at his disciples and he says, do you want to go away as well? Here's, here's the key. Simon Peter answered him. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Listen, this group, the one that you invite into your family meetings to make the plans and the direction and prepare and, and all this, this group will look at God and say, where else would I go? Like the last song that we sang said, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. You know, we, uh, we look at uh, this, this song and this life and the, the busyness that we, that we have and we get all these things and we get worried about what, all these different things and, and what happens is we start to place our interest at the top of the list. We start to say, well, am I, uh, what, you know, how am I doing in my career? How am I doing with my family? How am I doing with, you know, my golf game? Or how's my professional sports team doing? And we start to put all these things at the top of the list and, and we move God down the list. It, it, becomes, it becomes difficult. Well, now I'm running out of time. I'm too busy. I've got all this stuff going on. And, and why? It's because we have moved the priority down the list. We've decided that it's a little too difficult, it's a little too inconvenient. I, I'm probably not, hap, I'm not comfortable being in that you know, family meeting group. I just like the vacations and the events and things like that. But, but God says, that's not, that's not enough. All this other stuff doesn't matter. All, God knows you need all this other stuff. He, he, he understands that. But are you willing to put it, everything else aside and trust that he's, he's got your back? Are, are you willing to set everything aside and say, you know what? I am going to pursue God with everything that I have. And I'm gonna let, I'm gonna trust him that everything else will land where it needs to. Where else will I go? This group will truly know God and change the world. And if that sounds like a, just a phrase that preachers say, um, I, can, I can promise you the group that he was talking to, 
those disciples, they made a little bit of an impact. There was 12 of them. Most of them, you know, weren't that great of a, uh, didn't have that great of a reputation. They weren't the, the brightest on, on the block. But they decided that the words of God were more important than anything else they had going on in their life. And they were going to pursue that with everything that they had. I started out talking about group dynamics and my experience in the cauldron and at SKC games. And uh, my first game, it was interesting. My first game, me and Gavin and Justin Danner went to, to a game. We'd never been to one live. We'd watched them on TV and we thought, you know what? Looks like everybody's having a good time. I'd like to go see it. Gav- I think it was Gavin's birthday. So me and Justin bought, bought all the tickets and we, we showed up. We, man, we were ready to have a good time because everything we'd seen on TV was all about, yeah, let's go. And they were cheering and it, it's exciting and all this stuff and it's fast action paced and, and all this. And, and, and you know, we kind of already grew up liking soccer. So we knew kind of what was going on. We showed up to the game and man, the game starts and we're like four rows up right at the midline. Like, cause we're American football fans. We thought that's where we wanted to be. It was right in the middle so we could see everything. Um, so we sat right in the middle, like four rows up. So we're close. Like every time there was a throw in, I could throw stuff at the guy throwing the ball in. It was fun. Um, but we go and we sat down and before too long, like the game gets exciting. So what do, what do we do at sporting events when things get exciting? We stood up and we're like yelling and screaming and we're like, oh, 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 oh. And then we sat down again and, and then the game goes on and, and it, you know, Game moves back to the other side, and we gets exciting, gets intense. We stand up again, all of us. We're just, you know, up and down, up and down like bobbers. Like we're bouncing up and down. About 10 minutes before halftime, one of the guys behind us apparently did not appreciate our enthusiasm. And he said, with some more colorful language, that you all need to sit down and shut up. And, of course, we're all shocked because we're like, we're at a sporting event. When in the world do you say, sit down and shut up? Like, and so, of course, because we're respectful and upstanding young men, we did not listen to him at all. Um, so the game goes on, and we get excited, and we bounce, we bounce up out of our chairs, and we're cheering, and all And this guy just starts chirping nonstop. I mean, he's like, man, you, you all need to, you need to sit down. Everybody else is trying to enjoy the game, and blah, blah, blah. And, and we're like, what do you mean enjoy the game? We didn't bring a recliner here. Like this is a sporting event. It's supposed to be exciting. And, you know, eventually it, it kind of bothered us. And in the second half, he said something that I always remember. And when I was preparing this message this week, I, it came back to me instantly. We get into the second half. The ball goes down the right side. There's looking like a cross is coming in. And if you know soccer, you know that's the time that sometimes things can happen. And so we're, we pop up out of our chairs so we could see, and we're cheering, and we're waiting in anticipation of, you know, what might happen, and the guy behind us pops off again. He's like, y'all need to shut up and sit down, and he's screaming that now, and we all turned around, and we're like, what, are, what is your problem? And he goes, you all sat in the wrong section, and I was like, huh, maybe he's got a point, but I think you're doing it wrong, so Anyway, we go home with the game. We didn't get in a fist fight, just saying. Just want to clarify every, everybody's thoughts because, you know, like I said, we're loud. My family's loud and we're a little intense sometimes. Um, but we didn't get in a fist fight or anything. But it stuck with me what, what he said. You sat in the wrong section. You're in the wrong group. And then we started looking around the stadium. We're like, well, what group do we want to set in? And we're like, the cauldrons down there. Like, I want, they look like they're having a good time. I want to go set with those guys because they're just yelling and screaming and having fun. Like they're jumping up and down and getting excited. That's the kind of people I want to be around. I don't want to be around this guy. He sounds like the, he's the worst. Like I don't want to be around him at all. And as I, as I thought about this, this sermon this week, I started thinking about that story and how, how that kind of impacted me. Every chance I get to go to a sporting game, guess what section I sat in? The cauldron. There's only been a couple of times where I've sat somewhere else because I could not get tickets or I just had to uh, sit somewhere else. But I always sat down there because it's more fun. 
Like, if you don't think it's more fun, well, maybe you're boring. I don't know. Um, but, sorry, that was mean. Um, my dad came out just a little bit there. Um, so, as I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about this sermon, and I'm thinking maybe, maybe some of you guys here today, you're in that Easter reunion group. And you're, and you're, you're sitting here going, man, I, I just, I, last week I kind of liked, I thought I'd come back or, or, or whatever. And, and I hope the reason why you're here this morning is because you realized you were sitting in the wrong section. And you want to set in on some family meetings. Here's the key. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. We read it earlier. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Seek first. I can tell you for a fact, if you're one of those people that's, that's, that's here and you're like, yeah, I'm just trying to figure this thing out, there are some young men in this church that are absolutely in the meetings. They are opening a word of God. They are digging in. They are, they are growing, and they're going to change their families. They're going to change their neighborhoods. They're going to change this church, and they're going to they're change the world. I'm convinced of that. We've got some great young men in this church, and I'm just speaking to them because I know them personally. I'm not going to listen to their names because that would be weird, but like I know there are young people in this church that, are, that God's word is first. God's plan is first in their house and everything else will fall into place. And I'm telling you, here, here's the key to all success in life. Put yourself around people like that. You put yourself around successful people and, and good things are gonna happen in your life. And in, and in God's economy, you put yourself around people who are above everything else. They are pursuing God. And you're going to watch their families change, and you're going to watch your families change. And everything you do from that point on is going to be drawing you closer and closer to God. I promise you, if you are looking for a place, we, we're here. This is it. Plug in. Take yourself out of the reunion group and the vacation group and all this stuff and sit down in some meetings. Get, get intentional. Get serious. Seek First, not second, not third, not fifth. Seek first the kingdom of God. That's what's gonna change the world. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity that I have to come and to, uh, to share your, your word. And uh, Father, I thank you for the, the reminder that, that we are to be intentional and serious about what we believe. And that, Father, as the song we sang said, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Father, help us to remember that. Father, just forgive us when we, when we miss the mark and when we fail and we get, we get confused and we get too many other things in the way. Father, I just pray that you would just be with us and with our families and, and, and Father, with, with our study, I just pray that you would give us wisdom and understanding of your word.